All right, let's move here into the animating portion where we're going to manipulate the eyes and mouth. For this first shot, I'm going to start off with the mouth. The mouth is usually a little bit easier, not always. But here we have the shot where Ted is sitting there and then he just moves around a little bit. It's going to be a nice shot to practice on because we have not only a shift in perspective of his head as it tilts to the right, but we also have shaking with a little bit of motion blur. So let's get right into it here. We have this plate called Ted Plate, and we're just going to drag it, make a new composition. And there it is. And then we're going to open up Mocha. And Mocha comes free with After Effects. And it's awesome program. I use it all the time. And I'm going to go click on Animation Track in Mocha AE. I'm just going to hit OK on all these settings. So here we have it brought into Mocha AE. And we can see everything there. And I'm going to go to the frame that's going to be used the most in our composition. So we can see that he starts off looking forward, then he moves his left, and then he moves back towards the camera. So it's this frame right here that I want to start the track on. So I'm going to click on this right here, and I'm going to draw this around his mouth and nose because we want to get the most data as possible but we also want it to be a planar surface. His mouth and nose is on a slightly curved surface but there's not a whole lot of data going on in here which is where the curve is so it's not going to really affect us and so we want to have our track extend up to the top here because it's going to give her a wider range of data to track from and so with that selected I'm going to track forward And then I'm going to go back to the same frame and then track backwards. After that's done, I can click on this tool right here and hit show planar surface. Now what I need to do is define this area to be one that has a 16 by 9 ratio because the size of our clip is 16 by 9. I'm going to go into later as to why we need to do this. But it needs to be 16 by 9 and then we also want it to be something that fits into that area. So I'm going to move this further down here, further down there, and we want to match it up with the perspective that we have in our mouth. Luckily he's faced straight towards the camera so we have a straight on perspective and we have the mouth in the middle which is ideal. We have a aspect ratio that's a relatively 16 by 9. Not perfect, but close enough. After that's done, I can just scrub through this, make sure that the track worked out well. We can see that it's stuck on fairly nicely, even as he turns the perspective on the track changes. And now I'm going to hit export tracking data and make sure that we have After Effects corner pin set up that has the Mocha import option. I'm going to hit save. I'm just going to call this Ted Mouth. Now I can go back into After Effects and I'm going to duplicate this layer, call this one Ted Mouth. And I'm going to go Window, Mocha Import Plus. Mocha Import Plus is a script that you can get off of aescripts.com. I use this for every Ted project so I would highly suggest getting it. I think it's relatively affordable and uh, it makes everything a lot easier here in After Effects. And so with that loaded then I can go here and hit load file and then load that text document that we had previously saved. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm tracking the Ted Mouth layer. Then I'm going to go here and click on stabilize precomp. It's going to do a little bit of work for us here. And now if I solo this layer, you can see that we have a new composition made just with the mouth and it's tracking onto it perfectly. And if we unselect it, it looks exactly the same. So we're just going to be, be manipulating that plate. Now I can double click on it here. And I'm going to go and type in mesh warp. and just drag it onto this layer. Now I can use this layer to, and manipulate it. So I can change the number of rows. The more rows that you have, the more accurate, but the more time it's going to take. And usually the less realistic 
the mouth ends up looking because of all of the little points of distortion that are applied. So I like to use as few amount of rows and columns as possible while still being able to achieve the right look. Normally what I'm looking for is a point at the end of his mouth as well as the top bottom of his mouth as well and points that are close to the edge of his white mouth circular shape so that we don't have to distort those parts. So this actually looks pretty good right here and we're going to get be able to get a relatively realistic look with this. So if we want to animate what we do here is click on a keyframe for distortion mesh and then let's say we want him to start off kind of sad then I'm going to take these frames and I want to be moving as many different points of this mesh as possible at once. I'm going to move this up a little bit so that it looks a little bit more like he's frowning and then I'm just going to adjust these points so that the form, I'm going to hit control Z there to undo that part, so that it looks more realistic when modified. So that's a pretty good frown right there and we can move back into this plate and see that he is now frowning and then I have the keyframe already selected. You can see if I hit U. I'm going to move it here with a couple of frames. And now I'm going to adjust this so that it looks like he's making the O sound. So I moved that down there, that there, these two pieces closer together. I'm going to select both these at the same time and move them in like that. Then I can fix the distortion that I applied previously here. And then we can see here that there's a huge smear on his left part of his mouth there. So I'm going to select one of these layers and just bring this in. This is these handles are controlling the dispersion that we see in the pixels. So we can still see that smear there. And we're going to take this and just drag it out like that so that his mouth isn't smeared out as much and it looks like he's really making a small ooh shape with his mouth. And this takes some getting used to to really understand how it works but after several hours of practice hopefully you'll be able to get a basic understanding of how this works. So let's take a look here back in this plate and see how it looks and that looks really good right there. And if we play through this couple frames at a time, we can see that it animates from frown into the ooh seamlessly, and it looks pretty good. So that's how we animate the mouth. And we can do any, almost any facial expression that we can think of using this. And we have the keyframe saved, so we could even go select this. Let's say we wanted his mouth to move up and down as this happens. We could select all of these keyframes here and just have his mouth drop a little bit. And now as we play forward we can see that his mouth is moving up and down. We can control C both of these keyframes and then paste them and it's going to now look like his mouth is moving up and down really fast. I like to smooth out these keyframes by right clicking and hitting easy ease. So it's going to smoothly go in and out of these keyframes. And now if I play through this, we can see his mouth is animated and it's moving up and down. Now if we're matching his lips to things that someone else is saying, then we want to be capturing a reference of how normal lips would move if they were saying the audio that we're having him say. And so when that happens, we're going to simply drag our reference plate here into the same composition and then use that reference to animate the mouth 
how we want him to say and hopefully it'll be similar to our reference it'll look as though Ted or whatever it is that we're animating is actually saying what we want it to say there are millions of different combinations of different facial expressions that we can use to suggest different emotions and and get different looks so this takes a lot of playing around with but the great thing about it is that you have complete control over it and you can go back and test out different looks and test out different looks and hopefully find one that works best for what you're trying to achieve in your animation.